الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا اما بعد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اذا ظهر الفتن والبدع والفساد وصب اصحابه فيذهر العالم علمه ومن لم يفعل ذلك فعليه لعنه الله والملائكه والناس اجمعين او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم <تصفيق> رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جس ون ويلكم باك اول ذا برادرز وانس اجين ان شاء الله today we're going to be talking about the infallible imams of the shias once again now we know that the shias they have a concept of these 12 imams and they believe them according to some of their ulamas to be equal to the anbiya alayhi salatu was salam and according to many others they are even higher than the anbiya the prophets alayhi salatu was salam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now just for reference if you look uh, Usul al-Kafi, which is a book written by Muhammad bin Yaqub al-Kulayni, uh, a very, very authentic and a very, very accredited book of the Shias. In volume 1, page 270, the author, he says, he uh, narrates a tradition from Abu, Abdul, Abu Abdullah, who says that our Imams, they enjoy such a status which is similar to the Anbiya, alayhi salatu was salam except they are not allowed the same amount of wives that the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam are allowed. Apart from this, he goes on to say that apart from this, in every other aspect, they are on the same station, they are on the same rank or the same level of the Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam. In another book which has been written by the famous uh, Ayatullah Ruhullah Khomeini in his book al hukumatul Islamiyah on page 52, he very, very clearly, he states فَإِنَّ مِنْ زَرُورِيَّاتِ مَذْهَبِنَا أَنَّ لِأَئِمَّتِنَا مَقَامًا لَا يَبْلُغُهُ مَلَكٌ مُقَرَّبٌ وَلَا نَبِيٌ مُرْسَلٌ Very very clear, nothing to hide. He says that it is from amongst the fundamental beliefs of our religion that our Imams, these 12 Imams, our Imams, they enjoy such a status, such a rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no close angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever reached and no prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever ever reached. Very very simple. He has elevated them even over the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Now a uh, point I just want to uh, draw your attention towards is we know that in the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a major very famous incident took place which is called Mi'raj. And it's very uh, famous, it's a consensus of the ulama, it's an ijma of the ulama that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this incident, he had met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he had conversed, he talked with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now if we look at what Ayatollah Khomeini is saying, that no Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reach the status of the Imams, this necessitates that the status and the rank of the Imams this is even higher than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we see that in the incident of Mi'raj, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the only status after this, the only rank after this is even is above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we can see how high they have elevated these Imams that they have even gone, they have gone way past even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is besides the point. To understand today's question inshallah, I want to give you a few references and please just bear these in mind. This was just to show that the claim that I had made at the beginning that they have taken these Imams way past the Prophet that this was no exaggeration. This is written clearly in their own books. Now, in Usul al-Kafi, the same book that I had mentioned before, volume, volume 1, page 258, the author talking about these Imams, he says that these Imams, every single one of them, the 12 Imams, they know exactly when they are going to die and when they die, they will die by choice. Again, in the same book, Usul al-Kafi, volume 1, page 261, they say that these Imams, they have ilm, they have knowledge of Makan and Mayakun. As in, they have knowledge of everything that has happened, 
everything that is happening at this moment in time and everything that is going to happen and then he goes on to say la yukhfa alayhim shay'un that nothing can ever be hidden from these people so basically from the time of adam alayhi salatu wasalam until their present time everything that has ever happened they have knowledge of whatever is going on they also have knowledge of whatever is going to happen they have knowledge of that and nothing whatsoever can ever be hidden from them now the the great muhaddis Baqir al-Majlisi, who is known as Khatm al by the Shias, he in his book, Bihar al-Anwar, he says that these 12 Imams that have come, none of them ever died. Uh, what he means is a natural death. Rather, each, each and every one of them, either they were killed or either they were poisoned. Now, looking at the qualities and the attributes that have been established by the Shias for these Imams, just looking at these those imams that were poisoned it seems as if well not seems as if it is that they uh, committed suicide looking at the qualities that they had knowing everything that has ever happened knowing everything that is happening and that is going to happen and then nothing can be hidden from them knowing all this this necessitates that those imams who were poisoned when they took that morsel of food or when they took the sip of drink or water which had poison in it they knew that the poison was in that food or they knew that poison was in the drink despite knowing this they drank the drink or they ate the food and therefore knowing that they were going to die they died anybody with some common sense with a slight bit of common sense would say that this is suicide now we all know the famous hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he says that that person who commits suicide Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make that person the fuel for the fire of Jahannam my question is to our beloved Shia brothers and sisters is that do we really want to believe such beliefs that necessitate committing suicide of these Imams is that what we really want to believe I'd advise my brothers and sisters that please open the Quran just once more again and have a look at regarding whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascribes these sort of qualities to ilm of maqan and ma yakun la yukfa alayhim these are all qualities of only Allah himself alone and nobody else wa akhra dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen